Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. I hope you had a great day. Let's take a look at some new malicious compliance stories. I hope you enjoy them. The first story is called Every question has to go through me. I've worked for the same financial company for a few years. I enjoy it, I'm good at it and the company reflects this fact by allowing me extra privileges such as training new hires, cross training new areas and recently a promotion so I got more pay for my knowledge. Unfortunately, knowing your job can come with some drawbacks. Mine came in the form of leaving my high production no-nonsense team for a newly formed team mostly made of new hires including a brand new manager. Let's call her Barbie, cause she's bright blonde and a bit of an airhead. When I got the news I wasn't thrilled as I enjoyed my team. But I knew there wasn't anything I could do. I was even less thrilled when I found out Barbie had only been a manager once before this current job, was barely 5 years older than I was, I was 26 at the time and had never worked financial before. I still have no idea how she got this job beyond she either let them underpay her or lied about her qualifications. My first private sit down with her was basically her telling me how nervous she was and how much she was going to be looking for me for help. Ok, whatever. I don't mind helping as it makes me feel good. Well, helping quickly turned into teaching new people and me. Every time I got an email for help, I'd get up and go to their desk to look over the issue at hand. 9 out of 10 times, if I looked behind me, I'd find Barbie there next to me, watching and listening as I explained the answer to the question. I had asked the rep if they understood and would have to answer their and her questions before going back to my own job. Apparently, other senior reps dealt with this as well as a few of them started making jokes when Barbie was at lunch. A few managers threw barbs in as well as any time a rep asked Barbie a question she would run off to find another manager for the answer. I would understand this for harder questions, but she did this for everything, even questions about the most basic tasks of our jobs. Fast forward a few months and by now none of the senior reps really liked her. She had chased away our team lead because the lead would constantly be getting questions or interrupted while doing side projects. It got to the point that the team lead moved her workstation to another area just to avoid Barbie and told her straight up to buzz off. Well, I guess Barbie suddenly decided she's going to pose a I'm the manager card. We get an email saying all questions, reviews and system errors need to go to her and her alone. Ok. I and a few seniors should back some concerns. What about when you are at lunch? The rep can notate the account as pending review and move on. What about if you are in a meeting or with another rep? See the above answer? What if we get a question from a rep? Forward them to me. Do not answer the questions. I am the manager and I have more knowledge than you. Q Oh, it's on, it's a malicious compliance. Each time a rep sends me a question, I forward it to Barbie and CC the original rep. Each time I even slightly question something on an account, it's sent to Barbie and marked pending review. If a rep made a simple mistake that took a minute to fix, it went to Barbie. To top it all off, Barbie is awful at reading her emails. It got to the point that reps were coming to me and others saying they had accounts stuck in their workload for days as I never heard back from Barbie. During all this we finally got a new team lead who was and is one of the best workers on our floor. She's barely older than me but I'd respect her far more as a manager than Barbie. Barbie moved the team lead so she was sitting next to Barbie's station. I thought this was dumb as you should move those with more knowledge closer to the newer hires so they can be of more help. Turns out that's what Barbie did, kinda. Barbie was still having people send her questions or accounts to review. Only now she was then peeking over her divider wall to ask the team lead for the answer, then would email the answer back as if it was her own. I was between the middle of my team's desk spine but close enough to hear everything. During this, people, me included, were still sending her accounts we didn't want to work or had questions about. Some of the newer people would even send the last of their workload for the day as the new leaving without finishing was frowned upon, but sending them for reassignment was ok. 
it got to the point that not only were new hires not getting the knowledge they needed, but the team's production was trash as accounts would end up in limbo until they got reassigned. The team members with seniority were jumping ship as fast as they could and I was eyeing a position my old team when it finally happens. I come in one day and discover my team has been fully dissolved. The good news is I and the team lead after dealing with Barbie scrap for months got better teams assigned so we are doing fine. The bad news is Barbie wasn't fired. Instead she was given a new team as she somehow managed to convince HR the reason production was so low was that the team was 75% new hires who worked slow. Before things went to hell in a handbasket I asked a friend on Barbie's new team how it was. Apparently Barbie tried to throw her raid around again but got shut down as she was well known to be clueless. Anyone with a question would reach out to another team member or another manager but they still threw accounts at Barbie as now any that she got she had to work. The next story is called Sometimes doing less is more. This happened about 15 years ago when I had a summer job working at a staff canteen. There was a bit of food prep work but my main job was washing pots and pans. All in all it was a straightforward job, not too hard, with pleasant colleagues and a good vibe in the kitchen. Because it was a staff canteen the work was very regular too. We didn't have busy days or light days. The same amount of food got made every day and the menu didn't vary that much so I always had the same amount of washing up to do. When I first arrived I was set on making a great impression by doing the best job possible in my shift. I looked at those piles of pots and pans and thought I have more than enough time to get through all of them. Plus they were covered with burn marks. I was sure I could make them shine and when my manager saw how much better everything was looking my extra efforts would be recognized and dully rewarded. I will admit I was pretty pleased with myself the first time I finished my pots with 20 minutes to spare. Not only that but the pots and pans were also glistening. I had them so clean they practically looked new. I took a well deserved breather, stepping back to admire my efforts and was pleased to see the manager had noticed as well and was coming over to acknowledge them. This was when I was first introduced to the phrase time to lean, time to clean. The reward for my hard work was to pull out shelving around the kitchen and clean out behind them. This clearly hadn't been done in years and what was found back there was pretty nasty. A build up of dust, grime and grease plus whatever odd bits of food slipped through the cracks. There was much more heavy lifting doing this job, abrasive chemicals and harder scrubbing. At the end of the shift the manager pulled me to one side and made clear he was displeased to see me just hanging about. And if I ever didn't have enough work to do I was to pull out shelves and get to cleaning them top to bottom. Funnily enough from that day forward I always had just enough pot washing to fill my shift. My timing on cleaning pots to an acceptable but not excellent standard was perfect. Burn marks returned, I sweated less and no more shelves got cleaned. At summer's end when my contract was up the manager called me over once again. He earnestly thanked me for doing such a good job consistently showing up and working throughout my shift. Apparently he was used to others in that position being much less reliable. I'm glad he got what he wanted. But I was a little sad to discover that day that hard work isn't always rewarded. And sometimes leaning into low expectations is the best way forwarded. I hope you enjoyed today's video so far. If you like the video don't forget to press the like button it really helps. And now on to the last story. The last story is called Counting Minutes. The partner I worked for had let a project slide and was behind the eight ball with a big client deadline coming up. I had a free weekend so I offered to work late a couple of nights and through the weekend to get it all caught up and ready. I wanted the overtime, I had a trip coming up and he was thrilled to be bailed out. I took over a conference room and spent a few hours Friday night plus most of Saturday and Sunday getting all the files in order and correctly documented. I probably put in a total of 18 to 20 hours which would have put me at around 55 hours for the week instead of my normal 35. I was stoked because the first 10 extra hours were straight pay, $20 per hour but the next 10 were one and a half times, $30 per hour. 
I was pretty beat on Monday, but I'd scored $500 in overtime pay before taxes and was feeling pretty rich. Monday morning I showed the attorney and he couldn't stop thanking me. Monday afternoon though, I got called down to the HR office. There I was informed that they were very upset that I'd worked over 45 hours because the firm did not like paying one and a half times overtime. I was perplexed because I knew that they were billing the client $95 per hour for my time. So the extra 20 hours that added me 500 was billed to the client for 1900. They were clearing 1400 on the deal and they hadn't missed the deadline. I tried explaining that, but she was adamant that it was a real problem and that it could not happen again. I don't know if she saw me roll my eyes, but I promised it wouldn't. I went back to my cubicle and figured it was over. Nope, not so fast. A couple of days later, the HR lady called me to her office with good news. I was getting a promotion and a raise. The promotion was to the exact same job I already had, literally no difference at all but a title. The raise was $500 a year. And the catch was that I was now salaried instead of hourly, which meant no more overtime, ever. Yeah, I know it better now. Super illegal and super unethical. Here's the malicious compliance. Okay, so you don't want me to work overtime? Fine. From that day forward, I wrote down the exact minute I got to my desk. 8.75? That's what I wrote, not 9. Back from lunch two minutes early? Write it down. A phone call kept me at my desk until 5.07? It's all on the desk calendar. At the end of the week, on Friday afternoon, I take time to tally it all up. Company time. And if I showed that I'd worked an extra 17 minutes that week, you bet I carried myself out at 4.43. It was petty, but for the remaining year or so I worked there, I put in exactly 35 hours a week. Not 34.58. Not 35.03. 35 on the dot. I'd never been that way before. I probably averaged 15 to 30 minutes of extra time a day that I didn't claim as overtime. I was just doing the job. But when they showed how closely they were watching my time and then took advantage of me to screw me out of even the opportunity for the overtime I was legally entitled to, well, let's just say I could count minutes better than they could. No matter how much of their time I had to spend to do it. I'm a manager now, with almost 20 direct reports and I refuse to give anyone crap about petty time issues. If you are getting the job done, we are going to be okay. And surprise, my staff gets the job done. Who could have guessed that respect and appreciation would go further than pettiness and penny pinching? Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content. Let me know what you think about the stories in the comment section below. Have a great day. Bye bye.